Hi guys, my name is Charlie. Welcome to this very special episode of Monocure 3D Pro Tips. Today we're going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of print finishing and painting. We are joined by Titan Ross. Some of you may recognise him as Monocure's 3D ambassador, but most of you probably know him because he is famous for 3D printing, painting and automating that incredible Johnny 5 replica, which we've got down here on the desk. We've got heaps to get through, so let's roll that sting and let's get started. Welcome, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here. Good to uh, see you in Monocure HQ, finally. Have we finally, got, yes. We got, we got you here. So, tell us, Titan, how did you get into this? I started collecting toys a couple of years ago, and I got to a point where I couldn't collect the toys that I wanted to collect, but I could print them. So I bought a 3D printer and started printing out my own toys. Now tell us, did you start with an FDM printer or a resin printer? I started with a um, resin printer, just because of the quality. But a lot of people are afraid to take that initial step into resin there printing. There it is, yeah, yes. And why do you think that is? I think it's just because of the, it's a totally different printer and a different procedure and how to finish it and clean all the parts and stuff. Mm. Interestingly, it's actually more difficult in my mind to FDM print because there's so many more settings. It is, it is. The one thing that turned me off on FDM was the printer lines and just finishing the piece so it looked like an actual toy was the issue for me. So tell us about some of these things that you've got here. This was done for my son a couple of months ago. This is the Gorilla Band. Then I've got the Johnny Five robots. As far as quality goes, you, you couldn't do this on an FDM machine. You'd never get down right down to the fine details of the arms. How many parts is the Johnny Five printed in? This is roughly about 55 parts. Wow. But there are, originally when I first started printing this, there was about over 300 parts. Okay. I think so it was about 380, and I've oh. kind of combined them all a bit more just to make it a bit easier. Because easier. you can actually do a lot more on a resin printer as well, as far as printing shapes out. Sure. Well, you can't do an FDM printer. Yeah, and especially the small parts as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Oh, you can do some micro parts and they just come out beautiful. So I've designed and printed out this one just in a, a raw, in the tough resin, Monocue's tough resin, yeah. just as a little demonstration of the colour of it. Some other figures, I'm just messing around with some metal tones, just trying to uh, give the illusion that it's not even printed. It actually looks like a metal piece. This one over here is from the movie The Mist. This is one of the, I think it was the Widow Spiders, and I've just printed him all in the um, tough resin as well. And then how do you put the parts together normally? I normally just glue them together. Uh, nice quality super glue. Super glue? Yeah, yeah. super glue usually just um, does it before painting. And if you do actually have some painter parts, just scruff it up with some sandpaper just so it bonds really well. I think there's a real lack of understanding from the, the finishing side yes. of 3D printing. If you look at this, obviously, compared to this, I mean, exactly. it's really chalk and cheese. I mean, this is a lovely example of the, uh, the Monocure uh, Grey Tough. Yep, exactly. But um, yes. I think that I know which one I prefer to have on yeah, my, exactly. on my, uh, on my bench. What do you think that barrier to, to painting is? I'm not sure why people aren't really painting it. They should be painting their figures as they um, print them out. Maybe their painting skills are a little lacking, but yeah, it's all practice. The more you practice, the better you get. I'm sure when you first started resin printing it, you yes, know, as yes. I did, you know. I had I'm many not, fails. <laughs> so many fails, and we learned from our failures. Curve, yes. That's it. For example, we'll take Johnny Five. Mm -hmm. Would you paint that in the metallic paint in full to start with? Yes, I would. I'd actually disconnect the arms, paint the body and the tracks all as one go. If you do have separate parts, yeah, you can just peg them up on something, spray them separately sort of thing, and then assemble it and then start taping it off and start painting all the individual parts, mm. all the detail parts. And would you use the airbrush for some of these I areas? would definitely use some of the airbrush on parts that you see, like the front parts or the panels on the back parts as well. As far as the little details on the hands and stuff like that, just a paintbrush would do. So you've got a lot of different sizes. I do, brush. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a whole yeah. range of black paint brushes and stuff. A lot of work, it it's is. a bit of work, but it's worth it. It is, yes, you know, and the, you, the final product, yes. It's yeah, just, it's, I mean, this looks like it's a, a store-bought thing. It's a store-bought thing. You buy yeah. it in a store, yeah. That's the one part of, you know, the 3D printing puzzle mm -hmm. that, especially with resin printing, that mm -hmm. is so achievable. That's right, you know? that's right. And, and even with FDM, I mean, you know, using filler parties and things like that, mm -hmm. you can create very smooth objects can, and, yes. and surfaces. Yes. And, and when you finish them with paint and all, you know, these processes, you can make something, anything look exactly, yeah. store-bought. A lot of sanding. Mm -hmm. There is, there is a lot, a lot of, of sanding. sanding. But, you know, it's worth but it. But it's all, it's all part of the process mm. and there's a lot of people take enjoyment of that as well. What's your normal job or your real job? I'm actually a carpenter. Kind of used to this sort of fiddly stuff and we pretty much do everything. So 
very hands-on. Now there is a guide, guys, on the website, monocure3d.com.au. You can go to the ambassador section. You'll see uh, Titan's name there, App and Lights. And if you go down there, you put your name and your email address and you can download the very, very handy guide that he did that's gonna walk you through everything we're talking about today in a little bit more detail. But today, um, we're gonna get our hands dirty. We're, gonna, we're actually gonna do some painting. Why don't we clear away some of these things mm -hmm. and we'll do a few demonstrations. Get our hands dirty, that's it, let's do it. FDM printed helmet, which is done by John downstairs in the print lab, you can see... All of the print lines. The print lines. Yes. So if you're trying to make a, a finished part, yep. that's not ideal. Yeah, if you went and uh, just spray painted this right away, you'd see all of these lines. And I think that's where a lot of people are getting turned off. They're not, they're not putting their proper um, prep work in before they actually paint it. Yeah. So they'll just take it straight off the printer, maybe give it a little bit of sanding, and then just whack um, some couple of paint over it or a spray paint and they'll start seeing all these lines, lines yeah. and they wonder why it's not looking like a finished product. The spray paint will just follow what's already there. The grooves, yeah. So, so if you've got a contour, yeah. The, yeah, it'll just sink in and actually show it even more. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it goes high on the high bits and low on the low bits that's and right, the lines stay right, there. Yeah. So you really need a filler to fill all of these lines in first and mm. then start your priming and then your painting. So this one, tell us about this. So this is something that John's printed downstairs, but what's all this? This, this has white? been started to be prepped. I would say it's had a light sanding and it's been filled with some filler. I'm guessing this looks like Increta filler yes. by Monocure. Yeah, this is our new product that we'll be launching very soon. It's still on the testing phase. Before you um, came out with the Increta filler, I was using some like a builder's blog or something like that, uh, which is a two-part mix. It does take a, a couple a while to dry and cure and stuff like that. It does have a little bit of shrinkage. So I'm sure this Increta filler is going to be a lot better. Well, you've had it for a while. You're I have, one, yes, I have tested it out. You're one about I, I love it. I yeah. use it all the time. Yeah. Titan was kind enough to be one of our testers. He's given us some great feedback with it. This is a, par a car part that John's printed downstairs in the print lab, and he's given it one coat of primer. It looks like it needs a little bit more filling, but it's not too bad. Titan can just walk us through, show us how it all works. So we've got um, an identical part here, which looks like it has already been sanded. Just lightly sanded. Just lightly think, yeah. sanded. So we do have some um, definite lines in there that we want to fill. You can primer fill it and just sand it and primer fill it, sand it, primer fill it. But you're going to start losing some of the details and some of the edges. It'll start rounding off. So best to fill larger stuff rather than just keep trying to fill it with paint. You're also going to build up the layers of paint. And it's going to take a lot longer to dry too. So you might as well just finish cracks off or any imperfections with a filler first because mm -hmm. it's going to dry faster than the actual paint. So what we'll do is we'll get some Incredifil. So Incredifil, of course, is UV cured. So we need to be very careful not to open this outside. Exactly. Otherwise, it will cure in the light. We should be OK here under these lights on the YouTube set. So we'll just grab our spatula and I'll start applying it over a large area. You can use your finger to rub it in as well. So we just want to skim coat the entire part. So you're forcing the filler into I the am, cracks, yes. essentially. I want to fill yeah. those cracks in, and any any bits that are built up over the cracks that would just be easily sanded off and give us a nice smooth finish. The thing I love about Incredifil is the fact that it stays wet; it never dries as long as it's not in the exactly. UV light. Exactly, there's almost an unlimited working time to it. And most importantly, we don't want to put it on too thick as well. We just want to do it in thin layers so the light penetrates through it. That should be fine, that part. So we'll cover the lid first before we start Good idea. using the torch. We've all made that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're happy with it, you're now going to hit it with yes, the UV now light. Yes, going to hit it with the UV light, cure it and harden it. And we're going to hold it on there for about 15 seconds and slowly move it up. So that's all nice and hard. So we'll grab some sandpaper. We might grab roughish grit. Start with a 320, just to knock back all of the bigger lumps first. You don't have to be really aggressive with it. It's really nice stuff to um, work with and sand. That's looking good. If you do see some extra lines, you can always go back and apply more and just repeat the process. Once you think you've got your part all finished up, all puttied, filled and sanded, you can always give it a coat of the filler primer. And if anything does show up again, you can always just repeat the process again. So oh, just cool. giving it a primer coat will sure. identify any bits you've missed. And you'll notice that uh, Titan has decided to do this by hand and not with the Dremel, and there's a reason for that. Well, I'm only applying the uh, credit fuel in thin layers too, so that'll definitely be a little too aggressive. Okay, so that's looking good there for a nice first coat. Time to give it a prime, and it'll show up any parts we've missed. 
So we're going to use the MTM primer filler. What you want to do is give it a good shake up for a good couple of minutes. I'd say about three or four minutes. Wear a mask, wear goggles, do it outside. I'm going to step back when I do this. I'm just going to do little spurts just so I don't get too much fumes. So I'll just um, put, a, put a bit of a prime on the table first. So always see what Titan did there is he gave it a, a quick test spray on the table. It's always a very good idea because sometimes nozzles can get clogged. You're just basically priming the can, so you're getting all the air bubbles out and stuff like that. So just a, a nice quick light coat to begin with. We're going to always apply more after it's dried. Uh, being solvent based, this doesn't take too long to dry. No, especially which... if you're doing it outside. I mean, if it's a nice windy day, sunny day, it's going to dry quite fast. What's the next step? Well, what we're going to do is, because it's only had one, one coat so far of the primer filler, we're just going to give it a light sand just to knock back any lumps. And any high spots will actually be shown by the um, whiteness of the Incredifil. That'll indicate that we need to give this a few more coats, which we obviously do anyway because we have quite a few layer lines in it anyway. So we'll just repeat the process a couple of times, three or four times, but I'll just grab some sandpaper and just knock off that first layer just so we can see some of the high spots. Just light pressure, there's no need to press down really hard on it. And it gives you a nice smooth finish. And if it wasn't dry enough, how would you be able to tell that? You would probably get some clogging up on your sandpaper or you might even get uh, some smudge marks from the paint. If, if you do get that, just leave it for another half an hour. It just means maybe you've applied it too thick or it just hasn't dried. That's actually coming out pretty nice. So what we'll do is we'll set this one aside and we'll paint another one we've got already set up. We're going to tape up a section. We've done our little section there already. Masking tape is really great if you don't want overspray on any of the parts that you don't want paint. And if you just want to particularly spray um, a certain part, always mask up. Now, normally I use a, um, a blue tape or a modeling tape. This is just a regular painter's tape, which is all right. It's just a little bit stickier as it's sticking to my glove. And if you tend to apply a thick coat of paint, these tapes can actually bleed. They'll actually soak up the moisture and seep underneath the tape. So as you're pulling it back, you're not gonna get a sharp edge. So just be careful on the um, tapes you choose. And for a large part, would you use paper or butcher's paper? Of yeah, some sort? if you're doing a large part and you wanna tape up a large area, I'd usually tape around the edges and then fold over some paper over the larger areas and then just tack it on. So we'll grab some of the black water base from MTN and we're going to use the airbrush. If I was outside doing a larger piece, I'd just go ahead and spray the uh, use the spray can, but we're doing a small piece so we can spray the paint directly into the airbrush. Again, always use protective gear. Normally I'd be wearing a mask. So we're just going to spray a little bit into the airbrush. So we're just going to prime that up a little bit and we're just going to apply some light coats to it. So we've given that a couple of coats. Now uh, this should dry fairly quickly. So what we can do now is, and I always pull off the tape when the paint is wet. If you allow the paint to dry, sometimes you can actually, what will happen is when you peel back the tape, it'll actually peel off the dried paint with it. So just pulling it off while it's wet gives you a nice sharp edge. Now after this is done, I do two coats. Once that's done, clear coat it, yep. and either the mat or the 2K, a couple of coats of the 2K for protection. And once that's all done, put it aside for 24 hours and clean up your equipment. Sure. When it comes to the spray cans, always turn it upside down and give it a couple of bursts so you get the paint out of the uh, nozzles, the tips, and definitely clean up your airbrush thoroughly. So the next time you're ready to paint, everything is ready to go. Yeah, you painted some of these rooks for us, which are great, thank you for that. That's all right. Now this was a, um, the rust the effect. The rust effect. It comes out like a textured paint. It's got like a sandy grit to it. Now it's fantastic for a base coat if you wanted to actually go in a little bit more and give it some more detail and more rust effect. You can go in with an airbrush with some oranges and some blacks. The metallics, you had fun with these. I, I did, I had a lot of fun with the metallics. Yeah. What I love about them is they come out really fine and give you an even coat all over the piece. This is an interesting heat one. heat resistant yeah. one. Yeah. What would someone use this for? Uh, engine parts or something like that or around hot areas. Maybe if you're making a handle for an oven tray or something like that. Well, it says here that's up to 690 degrees. So that's pretty impressive. It is, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Important to remember these paints here the 300ml ones are water-based, and again, we sell these on our website. They come in a whole range of colours, already pre-made. You can buy these refills, which are exactly the same paint, but just 
uh, obviously not pressurised, so you can use them in direct in the airbrush. Yep. And then the uh, larger 400mm, these metallics we spoke about before, this is their pro range. They come in a range of colours and effects. We've got glitter. I think there's a, you've liked the stainless steel. The stainless steel one, the glow in the dark one is fantastic. I'd love to do like a Casper figure in it. We <laughs> also have an acrylic primer, which is obviously a single part, but it's very clear. It's non-yellowing and yep. it's, a, it's, a, it's a great paint and a great way to finish. So that's exactly. the final thing you do, isn't it? Yes, this? always clear coat your uh, final product. Products. Just, just to protect it. it, yes. Yep. How many layers would you generally I would normally on? give it about two layers of clear coat just oh. to give it some extra protection. And would you sand in between? Yeah, I'll give it just a, a very light sand. Thanks a lot for joining us That's today, okay. Titan. You know, we've learned a lot about these paints mm -hmm. and the process that is required and it's time consuming. It is, yes, a, yes. But it's not that hard. Yeah, the, the more work you put into it, the better results you're going to get. So there you have it. Thanks again to Titan for showing us everything here today. Remember, you can follow him on Facebook on Titanic Toys yep. and also Titan Ross on YouTube. We'll put the links down below. Also, Titan is very generously offering us this model that he has designed, mm -hmm. and we're going to give it as a free download on the ambassador page, and we'll include that in the link below. Yep. So you guys can print this and you can start practicing exactly. painting. Exactly. That's it. And we want to see them being posted on uh, Facebook on the on the users group. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be good fun. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing and painting, of course.